Not only is the Asset Alliance Group Scottish Rally Championship incredibly strong at the top end of the field, but it is also very well supported throughout all the classes, with many crews looking to start their season on a high. Let's catch up with the competitors we haven't seen yet. Taking the C11 on his first taste of gravel rallying, it was an excellent day for Alan Scott and Shayna Archibald. The MG3 pilot was absolutely loving the loose and his hired car, taking 40th overall and the best improvement in seeding award into the bargain. Scott Gourley and Greg Alcorn were sampling their 205 with its newly upgraded engine for the first time. Very happy with the performance of the new power plant, they took things easy through Cooper Park before stepping the pace up once they were in the woods. 45th overall at the finish was a solid way to start their season. It's quite interesting. I mean, you, you look at the BMG and you think, that's quite a wee car. All right. Rounding out the C3 finishers, Eddie Noble and Aaron Wood were happy that the hard work on the car was paying off and it was starting to be reliable. Unfortunately, the Fiesta crew were hit with a two-minute time penalty for booking in early. That left them 35 seconds down on John Brownie and Gordon Ritchie's cadet. The Opal crew enjoying a steady run to 60th overall. It was a more eventful day for Robert Tong and James Hudson, the MG surviving a puncture, but the big issue was James feeling unwell and only able to read the roadbook from his phone. Taking the Class 1, Alan McDowell was back in his Pinto-powered Mark 1 Escort, joined in the hot seat this time by Ian McDougall. Having done a lot of work on the car over the winter, Alan was very pleased with how the car was now going, finding it quite manageable on the loose, despite the slippy conditions. They almost threw it all away with a big moment on the final stage, but survived to take 44th overall. Cameron Black and Duncan Don were excited to try their newly upgraded Mazda, but it was a weekend to forget. The morning had throttle issues, no intercom, two punctures and a broken diff mount. Sorting all the issues in service left them OTL, but they were able to get some miles in in the afternoon, before turbo issues on the last stage, then called time on their day early. Greg Grant and Morgan Redpath were debuting their new Impreza and were looking very quick out on the stages, but sadly brake failure ended their run before the last stage, while they were battling for a class podium. Sixty-fifth overall, Kevin Jeffrey and Ian McLeod were contesting their first SRC round, campaigning their non-turbocharged Impreza. They would lose second gear early on, but it was still a solid run, spending the afternoon swapping times with Neil and Ian Phillip. The local crew racked up yet another Speyside finish in their very well-used Impreza, taking 63rd overall at the finish. After he ended his 2023 Galloway Hills upside down, Martin Burke was determined to see the finish this time out. With Alice Patterson alongside, he kept things sensible to take 57th overall and third in class at the finish. After a difficult 2023, Graham Sherry and Ewan Lees were hoping for a much better year in their newly acquired Impreza. Finding things very slippy in the morning, they kept things safe to guarantee second in class and 43rd overall. And taking first blood in the groundwater lift trucks Subaru Cup and Class C5, reigning Cup champion Jordan Anderson and co-driver Kenny Fogo were very happy at the finish. They spent the day actively enjoying the slippy conditions. The red Impreza was seen at some properly sideways angles on their way to 30th overall. Out with a new engine in their Fiesta, Lachlan McIver and Cameron Morrison were enjoying the extra power right up to the point that the dipstick flew out. They kept the car topped up with oil but were eventually forced out with brake failure. Christopher Smith and Amy McCubbin were making their first ever gravel start in their very tidy Vauxhall Corsa. Christopher was enjoying the woods but the morning saw them struggle for pace while dealing with a couple of mechanical issues. Those were sorted in service for the afternoon and their times vastly improved, grabbing the class win. Peter Beaton and Fraser McLeod were forced out early with mechanical issues.
Rounding out the finishers, Callan and Callum McKenzie guided their escort to 73rd overall at the finish. Callum. Callan enjoying the dry conditions despite the car taking a couple of big suspension hits during the day. Megan and John O'Kane did not enjoy their day in the new Fiesta. Stones getting caught in the back wheels and jamming them solid was one issue, and they later discovered there was a problem with the diff. They managed to salvage third in class at the finish. Owen McLeod and Ryan Urquhart had fitted a new screamer of an engine in the 205 over the winter. There were a few teething problems, an oil leak, a melted alternator wire and losing the exhaust mid-event. Owen reckoning the car is going to be a weapon once everything's running properly. MG Out for the first time in Scott ZR. Peacock's MGZR, Lewis Haining and Ewan Anderson would take one. top honours in both the class and the Motes Offshore Juniors. Still learning the gravel game, the MG pilot briefly visited the scenery on the middle loop as he tried to get a comfortable setup with the car. Happier with it by the end of the day, they were satisfied with 46th overall. Andrew Forbes and Alex Hill were experiencing Scottish gravel for the first time, the Civic crew looking pretty rapid out in the stages, but unfortunately they slid off the road in stage 7. Thomas Bell and Andrew Kelby were out in the ex Cocaine Fiesta, finding the car to be so much easier to drive in the woods than their previous 306, they were pretty happy to survive the slippy conditions and grab second in class. Michael Phillip and Laura Dawson spent the day building their pace in their Mark II Escort, getting quicker with each passing stage. Unfortunately for them, a two-minute time penalty put a dampener on things, dropping them from 50th overall on stage times to 61st in the standings, but still taking the class win. Sandy Arbuthnot and Morag Mackay's good run was spoiled when the crank sensor failed in SS4. Sandy fixed it at the side of the stage and they carried on, enjoying the afternoon and salvaging 72nd overall. John Bailey and Chris Wareham had taken some setup advice from Mark McCulloch in a bid to improve the Escort's handling. It was clearly working, the Red Mark II grabbing 59th overall. It was tight for 5th in class, Kenny Wood and Charles McKenzie piloting their brilliant sounding BMW to 6th, just 4 seconds away from Graham and Kyle Morrison's Mark II Escort. <laughs> Billy McClelland and Robert Wood crawled through Cooper Park when the flat shift failed on their Escort. On the gravel for the first time since 2006, Billy was taking some time to get back into the groove, guiding the G3 to 36 overall. David Hardy and John McCulloch were fastest two-wheel drive through Cooper Park, but then stopped at the end when the clutch cable snapped. That meant three stages starting on the button, which amazingly didn't cost too much time. Salvaging third in class with a good afternoon once the clutch was fixed was still a decent start to their season. Sandy Fairbairn and Craig Forsyth were out in the ex Keith Robertson BMW for the first time. Unfortunately, an issue caused a stage maximum in stage four, but the rest of the day they were running well, setting top 30 oh, times. Oh, oh, big, big swings. Go yourself, boy. See that Des Campbell, he started cheering him there and he saw him. Walter Henderson and Jim Kinlock made a steady start in their escort, Walter still coming to grips with the car's sequential gearbox. The afternoon was going better before they were delayed with a fueling issue in the penultimate stage. Ross Jarrett and Dave Robson had made their escort gravel debut at the Malcolm Wilson rally and were pleased that their Speyside pace was another step forward. Their afternoon attack was stymied when they caught another car and were held up for about two miles, but still managed an excellent 35th overall. 33rd overall and 3rd in class, Gordon Murray and Peter Carstairs guided the big escort to the first Haddo Energy Super Seniors win of the year. Still rebuilding pace after a long layoff from rallying, Gordon still managed a couple of spins and an overshoot in the morning, 
but built his pace as Come the day on. wore on. Come on. Car number 40, Gordon Murray. You've just... What happened? You made me take a photograph of the crowd. Mike Motes and Gary McDonald would retire early with gearbox problems. And Mike Grant and Graeme Kelman would slide off the road permanently in SS7. Barry Grinwater and Ashley Will were another to retire, the Polo's engine failing after stage five. And after a difficult 2023 season, Aileen and John Forrest were approaching the space side with a different attitude than in the past. In Aileen's words, going back to basics. The new approach clearly worked, Aileen finding a confidence again, especially from SS4 onwards, to take the top ladies prize in 56th overall. Dave Ross and Kyle McIntosh had finally got their amazing dam back together after its waterlogged incident at the Border Counties all those years ago. Both the car and Dave were on form, mixing it with the more modern machinery on the way to 29th overall. <laughs> Missing out on third in class by just one second, it was an average day at the office for Scott Peacock and Craig Wallace. Not only was Craig uncharacteristically carsick, but Scott wasn't very happy with his driving. 18th overall was their reward. Robin Shuttleworth and Malcolm Smithson made the long trip from England worth it, the lovely Mark I escort running strongly all event, to take second in class and a solid 49th overall. Keith Robeson and David Law had made good progress over the 2023 season with the development of their historic spec Forenza and that work had clearly continued over the winter, the car looking and sounding the sharpest it has so far in the SRC, on the way to 38th overall and second historic car home. After a difficult 2023 season, Ernie and Patricia Lee were finally having some good luck with their brilliant sounding BMW. Ernie describing it as a wonderful day on their way to third in class and 54th overall. And now there's people forging their birth certificates to get into it. <laughs> Good on you, man. Jim Robertson and Mike Curry had a very steady start to their day, which annoyingly for Jim, let first in class get away. They pushed harder in the afternoon in a bid to make up time, but had to settle for second in class at the finish. <laughs> Donald Peacock and Mary Riddick continued from where they left off in 2023, taking the Class H2 win along with first historic car home. They survived a big moment early on, almost parking the Mark II in the same ditch that claimed Freddie Milne and Max Freeman. 34th overall at the finish was a good start to their season. Mere Ernfus. Oh no, no enough. Get yourself sorted out there, boy. Richard Stewart and Karen Tate Logan's day ended with a broken axle on their 208. Justin Gunning and Michael Motes were leading the juniors category early on, but would unfortunately park the Clio in the same ditch that claimed them last year. John Crawford and Josh Davidson's R5 debut involved a spin in SS3 before retiring in Stage 4. John Rintoul and Ross Hind would fall off the road in SS8. Twenty-fifth overall, Stuart and Mark Irvin were feeling confident after some testing in Wales. They ended the day with the I-20 looking a little worse for wear, but were quite happy with how things had gone. John Wink. Somebody with a four end off. Oh no, Irvin's. Bob Adamson and Liam Whiteley's Fiesta were sporting an excellent new colour scheme, teaming up with Auto Perfect. They had a clean and sensible run to 21st overall and 11th in class. Just over a minute up the road, Thomas Gray and Ricky Finlayson's Rally 2 debut went very well. Gaining pace with every passing stage, they took a solid 15th overall at the finish.
are also building with every stage. Peter Stewart and Kenny McGilvery ended their first SRC round in the new Citroen in 13th overall and 9th in class.